What's up guys, it's Doll Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Fleekazoid video. So this one we've got, is Black Myth Wukong a threat? Uh, so yeah, obviously this is talking about how Western game, mostly journalists, I actually haven't seen too many developers complain about it. It's mostly been Western game journalists have been complaining about the, you know, the, the basically the lack of DEI is the biggest complaint I've seen, um, which is kind of hilarious, right? It's like, it's like this is something that nobody wants except these game journalists who most of the time don't even play games. The gamers clearly don't like it. And then, yeah, this game comes out. It, it <laughs> They're aggressively anti-DEI. Ends up becoming hyper successful. And, yeah. Anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. What D E pimp? Black Myth Wukong is a threat. A threat to the AAA Western gaming industry. An industry that hates its audience so much that it spends eight years making a game that can't outperform Gollum. A threat to the <laughs> in particular. Take Man, that, that Concord game. I, how much? I think they put like 140 million. I can't remember the exact number. I think it's somewhere around 140 million dollars. Concord uh, game price. Uh, er, er, cost to develop, I guess. Cost to develop. Hundred, somewhere between a hundred and two hundred million dollars, according to CNET. And then it sold like I think a couple thousand copies. Never had over seven hundred concurrent players. Points off the game for lack of inclusion and diversity. But how the hell do I take that sentence seriously when there is a picture of a magic monkey fighting a magic rock three lines above it? Hell, <laughs> of the things in this game aren't even human. I don't even know what this means. There is a man that can sing and play guitar without a head. What do you want, a mariachi band instead? I'm so con. Man, I, I know he <clears throat> he's being facetious, right? He obviously knows what they're talking about, but it is so. It, this is one of the things I find so funny, right? is you have these games with like either historical or fantasy settings where they're like I, I haven't played Black Myth Wukong but from my understanding there's not even humans in it I don't like there's human like deities but I don't think there's actual humans in it I might be wrong there I haven't played it uh, I do plan on playing it but um and they're complaining about like lack of diversity and it's also based on like a pre-existing uh, like novel slash legend, right? It, it's based on a journey to the West. So it, it's it's like, what are you going to do? Just change it? Which is ironically, yes, that's exactly what the games journalists want, right? This is why they'll have something like Tolkien, which is, you know, a pre-established, <clears throat> pre-established franchise from like the early 1900s. It's based on Western mythology, right? It's heavily based on Celtic mythology and Roman and Greek mythology and Germanic mythology, uh, and then obviously some aspects of Christianity because Tolkien was a hardcore Catholic, but it's, it's like very. It, 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 in his own words, he was trying to create a new mythology for Britain. Right? It's, it's very much based on like the British people of the 1900s, and you still have all these games journalists that want everything. You know, make half the characters black, half the characters gay. Right? Yeah, you know, it's the the put a chick in it and fu make it fucking lame and gay thing, and it's so annoying. It's like, just let the friend, like, if you want to make something new, make something new. But then when they do that, they get Concord, right? And nobody fucking buys it, right? It's, uh, evil cannot create, it can only corrupt, which is, a, I believe, a Tolkien quote. I'm probably misquoting him there, but it's something around there. It's, uh, the, the reason they don't want to create anything on their own is because it's just a way to lose hundreds of millions of dollars, which is exactly why people should stop fucking buying shit from these companies when you know it has that DEI agenda in it, right? When you get something like a Lord of the Rings that's like super progressive, get rid of it, right? Just don't watch it. Ignore it completely. And then they'll stop doing it, right? Because if they can't make money on that shit then and they can't make money on their own shit, they'll just stop making money. They'll go bankrupt. Fucious. And Black Myth Wukong is a threat to the American education system, as many Americans are finding out just how many Chinese people there really are. <laughs> over here. Let me show you some numbers. Oh, that, yeah, that is so funny. Is <laughs> the reaction is like how <laughs> fucking the reaction to the people playing this is how is this game so popular? I don't know anyone playing it. It's like well, one, I don't know how you don't know anyone playing it. I know a ton of people playing it. Even a lot of people that aren't hardcore gamers I know are playing it because it's such a big game. But two, this is like the biggest game ever to come out of China in terms of sales, right? 
Well, I guess it depends because Tencent technically owns a lot of companies, but it's like the biggest like Chinese developed game. Of course, it's going to be fucking huge in China. The USA has 333 million people. China has 1.4 billion. So when you see the player chart full of Helldivers 2 every day at high noon, and when you see English doesn't even make up 10% of the total reviews, remember that China outfucked us by 1 billion people, and they just got <laughs> a second game to add to their library for when they're not playing PUBG. With all that said, how's the game? It's janky as hell, but it's also a good time. Let's quit jibber jabbering and get into it. This game takes place in China or India. I don't know. This this game is based on Journey to the West, which I've been told is like the Harry Potter of China. So out of respect for China, and in a desperate attempt to improve my rapidly declining social credit score, I've turned all the dialogue to Chinese, and I have shut off the I think a better comparison than the Harry Potter would be like a Lord of the Rings. Um, even that's not a great comparison, because I think it was written in either the 14 or the 1600s. Uh, maybe a better comparison would be... Uh, maybe Beowulf, but even that, that's, like, kind of too old. That's, like, almost pseudo-mythology. Um, it's, it's, it's similar to The Lord of the Rings in the sense that it's, like, taking a lot of aspects from mythology, but it's a novel. Subtitle. That one's for you, Big Winnie! However, unfortunately, that meant I didn't get a single word of the story, so don't expect any lore-accurate information from here onward. That's it on the story. Let's talk about how this game plays. First of all, this game is a boss rush. You're a monkey with a stick, and they're throwing boss after boss after boss at your stick, and your goal is to use that stick to beat down every last one of them. Most bosses get no context, no cutscenes, no fanfare. They just get a name tag so you know what to write on their gravestone after you kill them. <laughs> the difficulty of these bosses, some of these bosses feel like a parody of a Dark Souls boss. They'll go from slicing you to summoning spikes out of the ground to calling in Rodney the Roach to hiding behind an invisible wall throwing attacks through it to throwing an attack that hangs like a constipated shit to getting body slammed by a tornado that they just spawned in. Don't forget about the grapples. I find the most effective strat to counter these is Alt F4. When I do bosses <laughs> like this, I go I say put me out to pasture. Just give me some jello and plop this old dog in front of a tube TV that's playing Frasier reruns. Much like the gameplay Play my dementia is too advanced. But most bosses are piss easy. Like, look at this stupid tiger. Watch how easy this is for me. I believe it was Confucius that once said, An oppressive government is more to be feared than a tiger. Oh god, the tiger is so much worse. Save me, oppressive government. Save me. Hang on. Confucius say some wild shit. Many people compare this game to Dark Souls, and I can definitely see it in some ways. But my only problem with that comparison is that you wouldn't believe how horribly you can play this game and still succeed. I have so many boss fights where I accidentally beat them while throwing down some of the worst combos you've ever seen. I'm talking horrible, truly appalling gameplay. Like someone just handed a stroke victim a controller five seconds after it happened. That's what I'm talking about. And yet, here <laughs> I am, failing forward. Get over here. You see that boss? My aura just killed him. I did not beat these bosses by learning their mechanics. I did not improve myself, look up guides, overcome them with skills. I wallowed in self-pity until my enemy destroyed themselves. Don't get good. Get lucky. Skill fills <laughs> get a man's lucky. hands. Gambling fills a man's heart. Now how does that combat feel? When my spells aren't on cooldown and I still have mana for the first 30 seconds of the fight, it's otherworldly. The flow is stupendous. The spinning outrageous. The style unmatched. I feel fly as hell. I feel like I could take on the entire US military. 30 seconds later when all my spells are on cooldown or I get bluebarred, I feel like a hobo on crack fighting my hallucinations. It feels like Dark Souls of my guy just couldn't stop spinning and flipping. Uh, See so you know, the hobos on crack. When I, I used to do road construction, we were down in the city and we were doing like one of the main roads down in uh, in, in Kitchener, which is you know a, a city about an hour away from me. And the, the, we, were, we were down by the bank, right? And and literally as soon as you turn down the bank, it's like low income housing right down that street. And some crackhead came up and tried to fight the guy that was on our steel roller. Not, I shouldn't, shouldn't, he didn't try to fight the guy on the steel roller. He tried to fight the steel roller. He literally just walked up. He started, like, talking shit to the steel roller, right? Like, the, the fucking machine. And then he started punching and kicking it. And fucking, but he's just sitting on top, like, looking at him, like, what is going on here? He looks over to me. He's just, like, all confused. <laughs> he, just, he just let him go off for, like, a minute or two. Then he walked away. It's like, yeah, don't fuck with the crackhead because he might stab you. Right. <laughs> just like, fuck me. It was funny.
thing with every attack. Now you may have noticed the light attacks do the damage of a nerf sword, but don't worry. You don't do these as much for the damage as you do them to charge up the heavy attack, and that feels like a proper punch. Upgraded even more, and it feels like a nuke. Upgraded all the way, and it feels like a completely different game. You're breaking legs, somehow you got a Mossberg, you turn into an unstoppable agent of chaos. Drilling directly into what makes this game unique, let's talk about the spells. Three of the things on the skill wheel are just micro doses of power, little helpers, like the glue to your combos, if you will. One of them lets you teleport behind them, then attack. One of them lets you freeze a boss in place. And pluck of many ensures that you don't die alone. Now, anyone that plays this game will notice I left out rock solid, and that is because rock solid is liquid ass. Congratulations, you just tanked that first attack, but in 1987, Street Fighter invented the combo. The idea that one attack can be followed by another attack. The coolest of all your abilities, though, is the shapeshift ability, of which the game gives you many options hidden all across it. But I also firmly believe that there is only one right choice here, and that is the flame-throwing rat. He spits fire, he That's slices, dope. and if you want to deactivate early, he blows himself up. I didn't know they did that in Journey to the West. I thought that was from Journey to the Middle East. I'm getting <laughs> sick and tired of all these multiverse movies. Well, I mean, hey, the, the West is the Middle East if you're going from China. <laughs> you're going from the Far East to the Middle East? That's West. All the other summons are capitalist pig propaganda. Like, look at this dude using the lightning guy. Oh, he does more damage. Oh, you switch your summon depending on the elemental of the boss you're fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Descent like that's gonna get you sent to the labor camps, Guaylo. I'll flame throw lava before I betray my special boy. Rat till I splat praise Buddha. Gotta talk about my gripes mm -hmm. with the combat. First off, skill wheels with cooldowns make me want to commit a felony. Second, I feel like a goddamn pilot with how many meters, timers, and bars I have to watch every time I get into combat. You have not only your cooldown, and all your magic, then you also got a mana bar, cooldown for the Yagwa, the health bar, the focus bar, and don't forget that the Monkey King also has to watch out for an asthma attack on that stamina bar. You can fly on a cloud, but old Curious George still has to watch out for a case of the wheezes. By the way, you can't just swap out your health potions for mana potions. Man, you know the most annoying thing about stamina bars in video games is? is you see this in so many video games, where this really annoys me in first-person shooters, especially depending on... There's so many first-person shooters where you're a super soldier, right? You're literally, like, jacked up on steroids. You're, you're a fucking... You're physically augmented, biologically augmented. And you can only run for about 30 seconds. And it's like... You would not pass, like, a high school fitness test. Let alone get into the military. Let alone be a fucking super soldier. I understand it's for game mechanics reasons, but this is still why I think the old Halo games are so goaded, is Halo 3, you couldn't sprint, right? Well, technically, you were always sprinting, right? Because literally, the, the, the justification for it at the time was, you're always sprinting. That's literally what the developers said, is you're a super soldier, you're always sprinting. Then they get rid of Bungie, 343 comes in in the next game, they add sprint, and, it, and you have like a 10, 20 second sprint, and then you guys, ah, ah, ah. it's like, okay, yeah, these are super soldiers, fuck off, get out of here. It's like in Dark Souls. To get mana recovery sometime after Chapter 3, you have to go find some weak items hidden halfway up Sun Tzu's ass in a secret area. And I'm already a monkey. I don't need the pox, too. I was gonna talk about how Stellar Blade has much better flow and how they integrated a lot more of these action mechanics much more smoothly. But there's no point in pitting these two dogs against each other. Gaming is in its century of humiliation. It's had its balls chopped off, and now they're being kept in a British museum. Good enough is great in times like these. Back to the positive. Three different fighting stances is Fantastic. You love to see different fighting stances in games. Jade Empire, Saints Row 2, Yakuza, all the greats have this. It's one of my favorite features. That being said, Slam Gang for Life, the other two styles are shit, and if you use Pillar, you should be sent to the Chinese labor camps. <laughs> activities. I thought the singing minigame felt very out of place. I think that it's just disrespectful to the source material to have to have you singing girls just want to have fun in a karaoke bar. You're better than this game, science. Back to the jank, whereas Dark Souls punishes you. Is that actually a real thing? Or is he taking the piss there? I, I that looks like it's from like Yakuza or something, but I'm honestly not fucking sure. You with one shotting bosses, this game punishes you in a much more subtle way. A way that is straight out of the art of war. Use deception. You see that shortcut right there? Go ahead, try and use it. Fuck you, invisible wall. Try to jump in the cave, invisible ceiling. You see that mountain? Well, you can't fly to it. You see that Scottish guy? Just for a short reign over this barren valley. Well, he's actually Chinese. I'm Bodhisattva Lingchi of New. 
new Mount Sumeru. Even the bosses have invisible walls on their balls. I can't take it anymore! Damn it! But this gives me mm. an idea. This idiot doesn't know my back's to a wall. <laughs> Use environmental factors to your advantage. Shit! I mean, know yourself in your enemy. I knew our enemy couldn't come down here with us, and that's why I let him do that. Art of war. I told him to fix this, but you know what? If China doesn't care, I don't care. I think hyper-realistic graphics paired with invisible walls everywhere is chic. It's empowering. It's the future. Now to cap all of this off, you need to know that this game is loaded with secrets. Secret items, secret areas, secret bosses, many secrets, and I won't spoil any of them except for one. Because this one is so crucial to enjoying this game that you can't leave this video without seeing it. Are you ready? Because if you want to have fun playing this game, you have to go to this area first. Follow me. Is this real? It's Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is still the best Wukong game. Thanks okay, it's Sleeping Dogs. Okay. this video, and another okay. huge thanks to all the pimpers for buying me dozens of copies of Squirrel with a Gun. Get ready, pimpers! It's almost purging time! <laughs> Hooray! No, I'm guessing the next video that he's gonna make is gonna be on, uh, uh, Ultramarine 2, or... Uh, what is it? Warhammer Ultramarine 2 or Space Marine 2? I can't remember the name of the fucking game. It just came out. Everyone's playing it. Uh, Space Marine 2. It's literally... Right here in the recommended videos, some guys streaming and geeking out. Um, yeah, honestly, this game seems really good. I need to start playing more games. I need, but yeah, I just don't have time. Man, I wish I I need like a hyperbolic time chamber, like from Dragon Ball Z. I would just go in there, play games for days on end, come out. It's only been like an hour. We're fucking set. It would be so good, but unfortunately, real life doesn't work that way. Real life's not an anime. <laughs> Anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.